So Andy, I've been fascinated to hear about your journey and all the things you've done. But maybe just tell what, what's happening next, Andy, because I know so you've got some news, um, what's happening for you um, as we finish up. So yeah, what's what's coming next to you? So I stepped out of, uh, of Digital Partners um, uh, from the 1st of December, um, uh, which was you know part of my part of my life plan. Um, everything sort of came together at the right time in that um, you know I'd been running the business for four and a half years. Um, it felt like it was time for change. When you build a business um, uh, like Digital Partners, um, we were you know we were part of Munich Re, but we were also on the side, and the business began to look very like me. Um, and you, you know as a CEO, you have to be aware of the the, uh, the strength of your own voice. And I, I thought the business could do with uh, someone else leading it. Um, I also passed the big 5-0 in Congratulations. September. Congratulations, wow. <laughs> yeah. And when I, when I started working in my early, in my early 20s, um, I thought I would really like to go and do a PhD, but firstly, I didn't have any money. And secondly, I didn't really have a subject at that point. Um, uh, but at 20, looking forward to 60 just seemed impossibly far away. So I so I <laughs> said, I'll work really hard until I'm 50 um, and then go and do a PhD um, and, you know, have a different style of life. So I'm right at the beginning of that journey now. I, um, I'm sort of hoping to start a PhD sometime next year. Uh, I'm doing uh, then also some non-exec and some advisory work. Um uh, so, so is this is this a form of retirement, Andy? Is this what we're saying? This is retirement at fifty. Um, it's you know, so, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I think these days uh, for for people like us, I, I think retirement is is not really a a concept that 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 makes sense anymore. You know, I get I get retirement. You know, if you've spent if you spent forty years doing a um, you know a physically demanding job, then you then I think you have a right to 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 stop doing that and you know to do what you like. Um, uh, my 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 life has not been so physically demanding. That I'm, that <laughs> I'd like to do some uh, something different. Um, uh, and for me, there's a there's a big difference between um, uh, between being a, a CEO and being a, a non-exec director. And the the difference is being a CEO is all is all consuming. Um, it has to be your number one focus in. Uh, in everything, it takes precedence over, um, over you know, other interests you might have. It very often takes precedence over, over family life. You know, you know, um, uh, it it takes it takes over your weekends, and 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 that is just inevitable. Even if you're not doing something, you're thinking you're thinking about it. You there's always stuff going on. Um, whereas being a being a non-exec director allows you, I think, to to advise, to engage, to use your to use your skills, to give something back to to the industry that I've um, that sustained me, uh, and just to have a yeah a slightly different a different pace of life. And and you've made this quite quite a quite a, an exciting and brave choice at fifty to step away from this role that so many people would want. But how? How have you managed your well-being? And you can say terribly, but do you have any tools or, or what have you done to, to sort of make, to try and help create some balance in your life? Um, yeah, yeah. honestly, the answer I think would be, would be terribly. <laughs> uh, I'm, frankly, I'm sceptical of, uh, of CEOs who claim they have balance. Most of the things I see from, from CEOs who are, um uh who claim who claim to have mindful techniques it tends to involve getting up at 3 a.m and doing meditation and then going out for a run and so on and this is all very fine as long as you have absolutely no family life and only sleep three hours a night um i i think the reality is as a ceo of uh, almost any size business but certainly a reasonable size business um uh, you just are you know you're not only busy but you also have you know, an accumulation of, of stress. There is always stuff going on in your business. There is always bad news to deal with because when things are going well, you know, you don't need to know when, you know, you spend your day dealing with the problems. Uh, so how do you, how do you unwind then? How, what's your sort of your, your relaxation technique? Uh, you, you retire at 50. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest, 
I never um, I never had a great uh, relaxation technique. Um, to, I mean, you, ha- you, you, you I suppose you have to t- try and take your mind off things. You, what you don't want to do is dwell on things. But uh, I, I, I walk the dog. My wife used to say she would see me out of the window um, and I would set off with the dog and I, and I would be, you know, talking to myself or rather talking to the dog. <laughs> Um, and I would chanter all the way through the, the walk, and if I was and if I was still visibly chantering on the way back, she'd know she would know I'd had a bad week. Um, well, so, that's an interesting that's an interesting I, type the of. The dog stress. absorbed a lot of stress. Well, hey, that's I mean, it's, it's honestly not something that's um to be sniffed at there. I think there's, an, there's a coping mechanism there that, that being outside and walking and being in nature is um, a very important component of of well being. Um, certainly, why I live in Devon. 